Good morning. Today is Thursday, January 11th, 2023. I will be a moderator for today's class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Thank you. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Inter excuse me. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua Messiah. This is a school and not a church. And neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, and Zambia, and students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. Someone needs to mute. iPhone, Lugenia. Yes. Can you mute, please? I'm trying to, um, I can't get to a cup. Would you mute me for me, please? I'm trying to get to that, and I can't get to it. Okay, Dr. Allen, can you mute? The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, 
making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and of his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of, or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form may only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plate as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe, it is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof to how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the Old Covenant and to write the New Covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the Gospel. The primary aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. 
six to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll be begin this morning with a prayer by Dr. iPhone Lugenia from Detroit. <laughs> we will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen. And today's scripture lesson is first Acts the seventh chapter. Thank you. Acts chapter seven. And that will be read by Dr. Jackie McCain. May we have our prayer, please. Dr. Lugenia, are you able to give us a prayer this morning? I heard the other young lady said she was wanting to do it, so I didn't say nothing. Anyway, oh. we thank you, y'all, for the Messiah for what you're about to give us, the knowledge and understanding of you, which we haven't had before you told us, and all of the um, blessings that you bestowed on us, we thank thee for all of that. Um, and we have some gorgeous and beautiful singers. Their voices is tremendous. I can't really describe them so good, great. Um, for our uh, moderator, for our um, host, Yashua, thank you very much for having them be um, having an understanding that we don't know and we're learning. And thank you. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Um, this morning, I would like to sing In the Wilderness. The story of the children of Israel is my story too. I've been enslaved to worldly vices and so my friends have you. Here am I in the wilderness of Sinai. Here's where I stand, praying for the promised land. Here am I in the wilderness of Sinai. Here's where I stand, praying for the promised land. To learn of Yahweh's purpose is what life is all about. And when we have this knowledge, then we can begin to shout, Hallelujah! Here am I in the wilderness of Sinai. Here's where I stand, praying for the promised land. Here's where I stand. In the wilderness of a Sinai, here's where I stand, praying for the promised land. Through grace we learn of Yahweh's purpose and none of us can boast. He gives to us eternal life, it's what we need the most. Here am I, in the wilderness of Sinai, here's where I stand. Praying for the promised land. Here am I in the wilderness of Sinai. Here's where I stand. Praying for the promised land. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lovely. Hallelujah. Good morning, brethren. I'll be reading Acts, the seventh chapter, reading it from the Schofield King James Bible, and certain the true and correct name. Acts chapter seven. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The Elohim of glory appeared unto our fathers, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Sharan, and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in the Sharan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And Yahweh spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith Yahweh. And after that, shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but Yahweh was with him and delivered him out of all affliction and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and over all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction. And our fathers found no substance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and 15 souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died. He and our fathers and were carried over into Shechem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the son of Emor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which Yahweh had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dwelt subtly with our kindred and evilly entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that Yahweh by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, 
Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do ye wrong one another? But he that did his brother wrong thirsted him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this sin, and was a stranger in a land of Midian, where he begot two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of Yahweh in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of Yahweh came unto him, saying, I am Yahweh. I am the Elohim of thy fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and dost not behold. Then said Yahweh to him, Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did Yahweh sin to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall Yahweh your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the assembly, in the wilderness with the angel, which spake to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our father would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back against again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then Yahweh turned and gave them up to worship the host of the heaven, as it is written in the book of Israel, in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrificed by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the stars of your idols, Rephraim, figures which ye made to worship them, and I would carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Yahshua into the possession of the Gentiles, whom Yahweh draved out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before Yahweh and desired to find a tabernacle for Elohim of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. How be it? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, said Yahweh, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? 
ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now, excuse me, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Yahweh and Yahshua standing on the right hand of Yahweh and said, Behold, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yahweh and saying, Yahshua, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Yahshua, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I've just read Acts the seventh chapter. Hallelujah. 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 And whoever I ask to read, um, let me do the prayer. I apologize. I didn't write it down. It was not purposely. Um, we like to thank everyone. Oh, our readers for today would be Drs. Jackie McCain and Dr. Deborah Van Hook. We'd like to thank everyone for their participation this morning. And I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenora Allen. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure and an honor to see you once more. I hope you're feeling very good. Um, the reason that I had Acts 7, the chapter um, Acts the seventh chapter read today is because I love this particular chapter because it goes all the way back to the law and to the prophets, goes to the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, and then shows the attitude that was in those who had the Holy Spirit that they were going to preach the truth and that they were willing to die for what they believed in because they had seen something that gave them that made up mind. And what I wanted to do today is welcome um, Marcy's, uh, Mandy's cousin. Uh, could you say your name again, please? She calls herself Anonymous Angel, but she's not anonymous anymore. Hello? My name is Lugenia James, and she didn't understand and remember for the prayer. No, no, no. I'm talking about this lady that calls herself um, Anonymous Angel. She came on today. She's a cousin of Mandy's, and her first name is Ria Shella. And I just wanted to um, thank her for coming the last couple of days, and I'm sorry that I didn't um, point you out before, because Dr. Kinley said to not let anybody leave these lectures feeling like a stranger that you turn you talk to them you encourage them and then you let them know what Yahshua has done for you and why they should come back so i want to thank mandy's cousin ria shella i'm not sure if i'm saying that wrong if i'm saying it wrong i apologize and i would just wanted to give her a um some basic information that i would like to share that really and that really encouraged me Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, that really encouraged me when I came to this class. Now, uh, I want I'm going to take like 30 minutes. Um, so at, at noon, drag me off the floor. Um, I wanted to just do a, a basic thing. Can we can the readers please read for me? I want two things read. Isaiah eight and 20. 
and I'm going to say it slow because I know that people say these rattly scriptures off and then you're like, what did they say? Isaiah 8 and 20 and 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I'm going to say it again. Isaiah 8. I'm not being obnoxious. I just, I mean, when people rattle things off, I'm thinking, who do they think I am? Einstein? Isaiah 8 and 20 and 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so Isaiah 8 and 20, that's in the volume of the book, it talks about that if anybody's going to be talking to you about your heavenly father, then they have got to show to it to you throughout the whole book. They have got to go to the law. Now you might say, what's the law? The law is what Moses received when he was brought up through Yahweh along with Yahshua, who is Yahweh, who is, who is Yahweh Elohim coming in a shape and form. And he, he was shown what we would call Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He was showed the law of Yahweh. And the prophets, they go, when you look in the, in the book, from Joshua to Malachi. So when he came down from here, he comes down with great knowledge and great understanding given to him by the creator himself. And incidentally, he had received the name of Yahweh right here at this burning bush. He was given the name and he was told that this his name was Yahweh and that this was his name forever. And he is the first creature in the universe to ever find out the name of his heavenly father. When he receives the name of his heavenly father, he is told, in um, Exodus 3 and 12, certainly Yahweh is speaking to him, Yahweh Elohim is speaking to him, certainly he's coming in the form of an angel, I will be with you, you are not going down here alone, and he says, come down, we sing the song, go down Moses, that's incorrect, it's come down, because you'll see that talks about that Yahshua was already here and he had seen what the people were going through and he's asking Moses to come down. Uh, can we, um, now all of this, this whole teaching is showing us that our creator, Yahweh, took on shape and form and called himself Yahshua. Yahweh means He who causes to exist. And the things that we say in, in this school, we came from a school called the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. When we say something, we should be able to prove it. The man who had the vision said, I had a great vision. I had a great revelation. Make me prove it to your satisfaction. If it is not proved to your satisfaction, you do not have to come here anymore. And he had the ability, his name was... Henry Clifford Kinley, he had the ability to foretell things that were going to happen. In fact, he would just say, there's going to be an earthquake in such and such a place, and then it would come to pass. He also foretold that there was going to be a Catholic president. He foretold this one that was considered impossible. It was considered that a Catholic president was going to be following the Pope and that be making everybody become papists or Catholics. So they just didn't think that that was in any way possible. He told them that a Catholic man was going to be nominated. He was going to be elected and he was also going to be assassinated. Now, he said this many times. People heard it, and it was common knowledge throughout the school. Now, this one man, he was a, I think he was, I think he was in the Navy, and he was called together one day with all the other people, and they're on the, on the ship, and they're listening to this very important information. And they are told that the president, Kennedy, who was the first Catholic president, and incidentally, I was in Catholic school at the time when he became president, and the nuns were very happy and thrilled about having a Catholic in the White House. Uh, so 
you know, so I, I was aware of it too as a kid. I wasn't in class, but I was aware that a Catholic is in a white in the White House, and it was good for us. But anyway, he was they the man was told, and all the men with him, they were told that the Catholic president had been assassinated, and he fainted dead away. And when he woke up, his commanding officer is standing and screaming in his face, "What did you do that for?" And his feeling was like, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. So he said that it was going to be taken out. So this man had great knowledge and great understanding. And he and we have been taught in this school about that the Messiah was going to go through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Now, myself, as a child, I lived through a time when it looked like the good guys were being killed. It looked like Kennedy, who soon seemed to be ha helping the, the black people in the South and everything, that he was killed. Um, Dr. King, who was telling everybody to get together, to love one another, and was trying to make things better for black people in the United States, he was murdered. And then, you know, um, Malcolm, Malcolm X, who had said all these mean things about white people, but then when he came to an understanding soon after that, he was killed. He was killed. So I thought, why are they killing nice guys? I'm a little kid and I'm thinking, why they kill all the nice guys? And then you go to school. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. And then it's like, oh yeah, the, the Messiah, he was really good. He fed the multitudes. He called the blind to see. He could walk on water. Um, you know, he was he was a good guy. He he could cause the deaf to, to hear. And, you know, I was told like we're in we're in the first church that he made after he after he went through his death and burial and it's like and they killed him too so it's like every time you got a good guy they kill him kill him kill him now what i didn't understand is the thing that was different between yashua and all the other ones is that he resurrected and that now he can be operating in your heart and mind he has not gone away. You are not waiting for him to come back. He is operating within your heart and mind now. That was that was good news. So um, could we read first, could we please read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Excuse me. Now, gospel, it means good news. You understand good news. If somebody called you up today and say, hey, guess what? I just got some money and um, I'm going to pay off all your credit cards. Woo! That's good news, right? So what we're talking about here is that he's got, he's telling about the gospel. Could you please read that again? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. And declare doesn't mean just to say, you know, like, like hey, this is important, you know. A, a declaration is something like you're doing it in boldface, underlined, red print. I'm declaring unto you the gospel, the good news. What is it? Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. And if you were to re and you were if you were to receive some good news, all your credit cards are paid off, all your bills are paid off, I'm putting your kids through school, you'd receive it and you would stand on it. You'd have a foundation in it you would be glad you know it's like oh my bills are paid good then i don't have to i don't have to worry about this anymore i'll give up my second job okay thank you keep going by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain this good news gives the salvation for your soul unless you have believed in vain unless you took it lightly unless you took it like ah, eh, that's an old wives tale which incidentally happened after he resurrected from the dead and he was seen of women and the women ran back and told the man it's like yeah well whatever and then yashua was very angry at them for the disbelief haven't i told you over and over and over again i was coming back i'm back continue for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if we look at this chart over here, incidentally, this is called a Moses chart. You can see that it shows that 
Yahshua died. It shows that he's buried in this, this tomb and that he resurrects from the dead. And when it resurrects, it talks about that many of them that slept came up and they resurrected with him and went into Jerusalem. That's the mighty thing that Yahshua has done that the whole world hasn't seen. He went through a death, a burial, and a, res and a resurrection. And, and that principle can be seen throughout the scriptures. And I just wanted to show you here that Israel was like in a, in a death-like state. They were under the power of Pharaoh. Power, Pharaoh had life and death power over those people so much so that he can just go and say well you know these people are getting uh, more and more numerous we got to take care of that why don't you go and why don't you kill their boys just kill their little baby boys so that's definitely a death and what Yahweh did is he caused it so that Egypt that was in was in bondage was in cruel bondage. They had to be making all these um, uh, these these tower chests, these chests of these towers for Pharaoh to keep his uh, his riches and his money in, and they had to do it a certain way. And then he took back some of the uh, materials that they needed. He took away the straw, so they couldn't even make the bricks that they needed to make these things. And he said, "I want you to do just as much." And people are finding that nowadays that their money isn't going as far and they're expected to do as much and there was look at the in the internet yesterday they said that there was a time that the owners of a building of the owners of a business that maybe they would make 20 times more than the workers now they say now they make 200 times more than the workers they don't appreciate you they if you're not if if they have a company that's making cars in um the united states and it's and it's a good business. They don't care about their workers. If they feel out, oh, the workers are wanting too much. They're wanting uh, they're they're wanting uh, pensions and everything. Oh, you know what? We'll take we'll take the workforce in Korea. They won't ask as much. The Koreans start asking too much. Well, you know, let's take some other poor third world nation. Let's go over there and have them make it. They are just concerned about making money. They're not making everybody come up together. So you're looking at a death. They were in a death-like state. They had to work when they um, um, when they could not make what they did before. Pharaoh would be very angry at me. They said we're dead and buried. And then Yahweh sends Moses with his name and it causes them to go through a resurrection. So they were dead down here in Egypt. Then he's brought out by a mighty hand buried here in this red sea and incidentally they did not get wet and then they resurrected into the wilderness of sinai and they here they were to praise their creator and he said that he wanted them to worship him on the mount i spoke to a person once and said why should we worship him because he has given you everything you have and all he wants is your praise and your worship and your your love because he has loved you, you should love him. So there was a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And there was, they were in this wilderness for 40 years. Now, what I want to show you here in this tabernacle pattern, it's just showing this is called man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. But in the scriptural reading we were reading today, it talks about in the scripture we, that this was a tabernacle of witness so you're seeing here that there was an altar here that when man when the jews this was given to the jews and to the jews only that's what that's what man doesn't understand that's what this class is about see doctor had to get the vision and the revelation and was soon made obvious to him that if he went to the world if he went to the teachers if he went to the so-called people who were interested in preaching the gospel that they were not going to do it you couldn't go down to your presbyterian church and sit down with the ministry and they say oh yeah you're right his name is yahweh oh yeah he came to fulfill it says in the, in the book over 40 times oh yeah um that natural physical law that was given 
that has been fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah. And now we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, you, you proved the three through the scriptures. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kelly. We're going we're gonna, to um, share this with the world. Is that what happened? No. So anyway, that's one thing. That is one thing about being <laughs> sitting in your alone in your little room. You don't know what people are doing. Anyway, so there's oh, a girl, we're good. We're with you. Thank you. <laughs> so there's a there's a death. There's a death over here where these innocent sacrifices were offered up, and they're pointing to Yahshua the Messiah because he's an innocent sacrifice. They um, the sacrifice had to be cleansed he is your cleansing yashua is your cleansing he is your 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 i'm not going to say he is your cleansing he, um there was a horn of holy anointing oil that was put on the priest once once in his lifetime he is ordained but at the door this holy anointing oil that was going to quicken him so that he can act perfectly in this tabernacle pattern and that's points to a resurrection. So can we? So it was a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And he he is the he is the water of regeneration. He he talks about Yahshua talks about I am the resurrection and the life. So you're beginning to see that this tabernacle, which when I was in school, they they didn't give us a Bible. I went to Catholic Church for twelve years. They didn't give us a Bible to our eleventh year, and we never discuss the tabernacle in any kind of of depth at all we had a little tabernacle on the altar and it had the host the little bread host that we were supposed to eat that showed you having the spirit in you you would you would eat that host and it would it would show that you were taking of that bread you know come and and eat with me so what you so that's what you would do and it was locked and um you can the, the the priest had a key now how are you gonna lock how are you gonna lock you know this is supposed to be the body and blood how are you gonna lock your messiah in in a little chest <laughs> on your desk you know so it was locked the priest had a key he would open it up he would take he would take it out and what they would do and pass in here you got a light a seven branch lampstand representing the presence of Yahweh. Well, in that little tabernacle that they had on the altar, it was like a little box, like a little um, gingerbread house. So it would be, it was right there on the house. If the, if the host, if the little bread thing, the little circuit, very dry cracker, they weren't even like crackers. I never had a cracker that nasty. If it was in the gingerbread house or that little tabernacle, then they would have this light that would be on. So, you know, okay, God is in. If it wasn't in there, then the light is out. Well, Yahweh set it up for the children of Israel always to be in the light. Um, they they had this, this lamp stand here, and at night he was a plume of fire. So he was always in the light. And I think about, like, they called them the children of Israel, the um, the. the the Hebrews here were called the children of Israel. Israel was their um, Jacob. He was the, their grandparent, and and so they would they would have that there. And I was like, I, I just thought about it the other day. When you have children, maybe they're afraid of the dark. Some adults are afraid of the dark. You give them a little nightlight. I have a nightlight. You would have <laughs> you would have that light there. Yahweh had them always in the light because he is eternal. You are, you can always call on him. Okay, anonymous angel, you can always call on Yahweh. He is ever present. So that that's what that lampstand was supposed to be showing. And sure enough, Yahshua comes in, and one of the things he says is, I am the light of the world. And then they have bread, they had nourishment that was put on this table. He says, he talks about himself being the bread it shows here that there was a, a um what is this called incense there was incense on his, his table and it was for intercession between yahweh and man he you can read it in i think it's in timothy he is the only intercessor now when you get so this tabernacle do you see how the bible 
some little passages that are in the law are beginning to meld with Yahshua the Messiah that we consider the end of the book. Now, the Jews, they have taken the law and the prophets and they say, okay, this is ours. These are our holy writings. Um, the Christians, they're saying, well, we have the whole book, but really they like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and, and the letters, right? This teaching that was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley brought the whole book together and released the seals. It talks about their seven, seven seals. You know, he, he's, he's, the, he's the host. He's, the, he's your sacrifice. He's the, um, he's the cleansing. He is, he is the door. And when you're operating in him, he's got the light. He is your light. He is your bread. He is your intercession. He is taking you through the veil, through the past, past this existence into the next existence, which let me let me do this this way. If you can understand, and I'll tell you, I only began to really understand this is when I started coming to Honest Heart of Truth Seekers and we started having these great teachers come in and teach us these wonderful things. And then I was able to understand that um, the creation abides within eternity. And the creation allows for time. So you got antediluvian age, antediluvian age, antediluvian age, the second age is in time, the post age is in time, this age here, the present kingdom age, the fourth age, that's in time, but time is within eternity, and that's what we didn't know, there is, it's timelessness, that's what it is, and you can, you can, you get a little bit of understanding in timelessness, if you've ever, I know we've discussed it when you go to a seminar and all you're doing is meeting with people, going to class and then having discussions about them, going to meals. And it's like, Yahshua, 24 hours. That's what your focus is. That's what your delight is. And it's like, and I remember when I first came, the seminars weren't just weekends. They were like a week. And you were really like, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> because you are time doesn't matter anymore. It's like when you're retired, uh, Sunday is just as good as Tuesday. It's another day that you don't have to go to work. And that's what Yahshua has, that's what Yahweh was showing us this, that, that we are working here to learn of him. And then you're going on to going on to his rest, timelessness, where you will be not subject to a physical body that gets tired and 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 needs help and you got to worry about the, your newest hairstyle all of that stuff is gone all you're going to have to do is worship and know about your creator here you're finding out why he should be worshiped and then you're going to be going on forever okay whoa time passes when you're having fun okay so can we get um i want to get the scripture reading Acts the seventh chapter. Okay. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I just wanted to do this and I'm gonna like zip through this real fast because uh we don't have a lot of time. But in but in um the end of the sixth chapter, what has happened is that the Messiah has been killed. And he's killed just the way he's supposed to be killed. It said, said all the way back under the law that he's going to be taken and that he's going to be as a, a, a sheep and he's not going to open his mouth. Everything that they said, just like the lamb was piercing the side, he's piercing the side. When you look at the Passover, there were four points of blood on the door. You know, he is the door. They put a crown on his head. They put a nail in one hand, a nail in the other hand, and then at the bottom, they put they put his feet together and they nail it four points of blood. Everything is happening is just as it's supposed to be happening. Now Stephen has received this Holy Spirit. He's full of this Holy Spirit, and he um, there the the powers that be that don't see that don't understand are angry at Stephen because he's saying stuff that they don't want to hear. Um, 
Uh, can we just read this quickly from eight, please? And I know I don't have a lot of time. Accident. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles amongst the people. <clears throat> then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the, of the Libertines and the Cyrenes and the Alexandrians and them of Cilicia and of Asia. Okay, so could you read 10? And they were <clears throat> not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. He's speaking with the, with the Holy Spirit. They can't go against him. Keep going. Then they bribed men which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against Elohim. What's he saying? The law has been fulfilled. You don't have to do that anymore. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? Twelve. And they Twelve. stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the, to the council and said, of false witnesses, which said, this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. Right. For he, for we have heard him say that this Yahshua of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Yes. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it if it had been the face of an angel. So they take him, they put him in a council and they're looking at him and they're listening to him. And it's like, wow, we're seeing the face of an angel. Now I'm just going to go. And he's talking to them, men and brothers. The element, he talks about how they were brought out by Abraham, get away from your kindred and that you're going to get a special land. And um, Elohim spoke on this wise, six, that his seed would sojourn in a strange land and they should bring them into bondage and treat them 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage, bondage will like so that his people were going to go through a death, a burial and a resurrection. That's what that's what he's being told all the way back there. And then he talks about that the story of Joseph, that he was going to be a son and he was going to be sold um, down into Egypt and and that they were going to have, he was going to have great afflictions. And uh, then, the, then there was going to this Joseph, he was going to be able to have visions and revelations. And that Joseph was the one that was going to be able to feed the whole world. It's not saying all this, but you can, when you read the book, then you see what happened. Then sent Joseph and called his Jacob to him and all his kindred, three, four. And so Jacob went down, down into Egypt. So there's a, there is a, a resurrection, all the family is brought back together again. If you think of death, burial, resurrection, because I would just read, think about it when we were reading the scripture reading, it's like, wow, he's talking about the death, burial, and resurrection over and over again. And the death, burial, and resurrection is not pointing necessarily to you, it's pointing to Yahshua. And when you, every time you go to bed at night, you're dead tired, you're buried under the covers, and then early in the morning, you resurrect. You see the sun go down every day below the, the the horizon, death, burial, and it resurrects. And you even know what time it's going to go. Oh, it's coming up at 714 today. And that's when you know how, that's when you know about it. And then uh, Acts 744, uh, it talks about, can you read that? Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. Okay. And as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that she make it according. So this is a tabernacle of witness. And they're talking about how Yahweh had the tabernacle built. Um, and then he's telling them, let me see, which one of the prophets, now he's talking to them and say, you know, you guys have always messed up. Which of the one of the prophets have have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them, which which showed one before the coming of the just one, that's Joshua, of whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. You got this this law and this prophet and everything, and you killed the Messiah. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Why were they cut to the heart? Because it was true, and they gnashed on them with the with his teeth, with their teeth. 
but he being full of the Holy Spirit. That's what this teaching is all about for you to know and understand Yahshua and have that same spirit that had Stephen standing up, not being afraid and preaching the gospel. When Yahshua, when he's on the cross, you know, when he says, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. And then he lays down his life, just like the lamb laid down his life. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, look up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Yahweh and Yahshua standing on his right hand and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man. See, Yahweh, certainly I will be with thee. You know, he said that all the way down back there with with uh, Moses in uh Moses, when when Moses, when he's told him to go down, I want you to go down to the biggest, baddest guy in the world and tell him that he's wrong. But certainly I will be with you. He said, so here's Stephen. Thousands of pages later in your Bible, behold, I see the heavens. See, the book is one. Behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran onto him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their feet. Then their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Saul is going to turn out to be a great believer in Yahweh, also full of the Holy Spirit, but not now. And as they stoned Stephen, he called upon Elohim. See, his focus, that's what this spirit in you can do. It keeps you focused. You're, get, you're getting pulled out of this physical and encouraged towards the spiritual. And as they stoned Stephen, he calling upon Elohim said, Yahshua, Elohim, receive my spirit. And he yelled down and cried with a loud voice, Yahshua, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Yahweh took him home. He went through a death, a burial, and a resurrection, and he is comforted forever. That's why we have these classes. That's why we come together. We're trying to learn as much as we possibly can. And as you learn, the, the teaching gets brighter and brighter in your life and the background gets darker and darker and you see what's important. So I, whoop, I'm over two minutes. Mm -hmm. So That's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Is this where we were? This is page 52? Yes. Okay. You want to pick it up somewhere? Yeah, pick it up where he says, he said he come in to fulfill. Okay. Okay. He said he come in to fulfill it, to take it out of the way. Okay, could you do me a favor? Could you read? Uh, could you read here? Now, listen, folks. Do you see that part? Now listen, folks, on the day of Pentecost, could you pick it up from there? Okay. On the day of Pentecost? Now listen, folks, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Jews. Seven years later on the Gentiles. Do you see it? Hebrew. How? That you might walk in the Spirit. Do none of those natural things as a service unto Yahweh because he's taking them away. And if you're going to continue. Okay. To die, okay. Yeah, I see where you're at now. Okay. So you wanted me to start to say now it says. Or, okay, yeah, I start. just wanted to understand that the Hebrews don't understand because you don't have to do these things anymore. So where are you? Let's start at Dr. Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy says, see, now look at this. 550 me. That's what you're talking about it right okay, in there. Go right? ahead. I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. Now look at this. Okay. So Five, now look at this. 550 million Roman Catholics. Look at Jehovah Witnesses. Look at the churches of God all over the world. See, Nan says he takes away the first, all the natural, every bit of it. See, now here's the Pope over there meddling with that which was under the first covenant, Passover suppers. I heard the bell, water baptism. See, you follow? All of the natural, everything. He taketh it away that it might establish the first that you, now listen folks, see on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Jews. Seven years later on the Gentiles, Hebrews, that you might walk in the spirit. Do none of these natural things, you understand, as a service unto Yahweh. You follow that now? Because he's taken them away. 
And if you're going to continue to do them, you see, you don't believe the scriptures. You don't believe the prophets of Yahweh. You think it's going to continue on. He said he come in to fulfill it, to take it out of the way that he might establish the first. And then that promise, I'll say this, I'll sit down. That promise that was made to Abraham, that in his seed, he would multiply his seed as the sand of the sea, as the stars of heaven. Now listen, folks. Listen close so you can take this no, home and study. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I hate to butt in, but before we get any further, uh, we it was discussed before, but he he said he come in to fulfill it, to take it out of the way that he might establish the first. That's 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 controversial because if he took it out of the way, the first had already been established. Mm -hmm. So we need to point that out, I think, for a clear understanding. That's true, because it says in the book that um, something about um, he takes away the first that he can establish the second. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know the the second covenant. So I don't know why he's saying he might establish the first. Anybody got understand an understanding about that? Excuse me, Doctor Lenore. Yes. Um, is that how it's read? Um, I mean, Jack, is that's that the, how it's read, Jackie? Original. In the right, um, that's the original copy. It says establish the first, and he says it twice. He doesn't say it just one time. He says it twice. You know, so he could be on a different plane when he says that, you know, but he says it twice. So I'm not questioning what the Holy Spirit said. I'm going to wait until he show it to me. But I do no, know. No, I what just wanted to know if that's yeah, how it, it does was say read. that, and it does look like it's wrong. Uh, Dr. Lewis, can you help us with this? Well, yeah. we talked about it yesterday. You ought to have uh, yeah. Hebrews 12 and 7 through 9 read. I mean, uh, 10, 7 through 9. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, Hebrews. 10, 10 and 7. And you might as well read the 10 first, too. But... Okay. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7, 10 and 7. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering. So that, that volume of the book is the law and the prophets. The law is the first five books and the prophets are in the next 34 books. And he says, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It's testifying to Yahshua. I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. Go ahead. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, even for sin thou wouldest not. Neither had its pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Now you'd say, well, why didn't he say? Why is he saying he didn't? He didn't want those offerings because they weren't the real one. The Yahshua was going to be the real sacrifice for mm -hmm. sin. So those were types and shadows that were under the law, uh, and those things are in the prophets too. But go ahead and read. Then said he, "Lo, I come." to do the will, excuse me, thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Now, he said that earlier in the lecture, too. There is a couple times where it says establish the first. It does say that. But, you know, he he's, he's going by what's in the Bible. You understand? Matter of fact, there's another place, uh, uh, which on your one you're reading, uh, uh, well, anyway, Jackie, uh, Jackie that's that. page 14 there. He'll, he'll, he'll talk about that at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. uh, it says Yahweh only had one sacrifice and all the body that thou hast prepared, uh, one sacrifice and 
all the body that has thou prepared for me. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume, in the volume of the book, as it is written of me, to do thy will, O Yahweh. Listen, he taketh away the first. What's that right. for? That he may establish the second. So he said right. that earlier in the lecture. Right, right. Uh, so, and that's what's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He's not going to say something. And that's one thing he used to say. I'm not going to teach you something that's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So even though it has that there, you know, he misspoke. Uh, yeah, you, you, he he uh, he's going to use what's in the Bible. That's the point. And then it says, by the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua Messiah once for all. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was a little bit above that uh, that we didn't read today, but it was read yesterday. They they say that. Um, well, are you the only one that has right. the truth? Right. <laughs> and he said, well, Yahshua the Messiah was the only one with the truth at the end of that age. Mm -hmm. right. So, and he was the only begotten son of Yahweh. And, and, and so, yes, this is the only truth Yahweh's given the world. And he says, now you want to be stubborn and hot-headed about it, you'll go to the lake going against, because you're really going against Yahweh. Now, I will say this with the scripture lesson, which I think is important. Um, and you didn't have that part read, but you because you were really running through it and you did a beautiful job. But uh, it is read the Acts, King James Version, mm -hmm. Acts 7, 44 and 45. And you also have John. 545 he said if you believe Moses you believe me for Moses wrote of me mm -hmm. well if they got Jesus in the King James Version did Moses write of Jesus no that's nowhere in the Bible that uh -huh. he wrote the, in the first five books you will not see the name Jesus but Yahshua said uh, for you had believed Moses you believe me for he wrote of me Mm -hmm. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my, my words? See, so he said Moses wrote to him. All right. Now, in the King James Version, you'll have Jesus there. But we don't see no Jesus where Moses <laughs> wrote a man called Jesus. Okay. Uh, and it's not in the prophets. So I guess the law, he can't fulfill the law and the prophets if there's nobody named Jesus in the law and the prophets. Okay. But now read the, uh, the Acts 744 7, King James Version. Mm -hmm. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Now see, and we show in this school how that they were in the wilderness of Sinai, and they built a tabernacle there. And he's calling the tabernacle of witness. It's witnessing to Yahweh Elohim, the creator. Okay. And Moses was shown that and they made it uh, in the wilderness and followed around 40 years with it. The cloud leading them. Read on. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus. King James Version. Now you see the that? It mm -hmm. says, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus mm -hmm. into the possession of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. See, they took Yahshua out of the Bible and put Jesus every place. And they're saying Jesus was back there going, bringing them into Canaan's land. See, now you don't read that. It was a man named Joshua. But since there's no letter J, his name is Yahshua. But this is one place where they they're kind of got caught that they know that his name is really Yahshua. And in the Bible, they took all the Y's out of the Bible and put J's there. So they call him Joshua. But there's no letter J in Hebrew. Uh, there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Still is not a letter in Hebrew today. So Moses couldn't have wrote uh, uh, Jesus or Joshua. He wrote Yahshua. Okay. Just like the father's name, Yahweh, but the Bible translators took it out. So it says, which our fathers came in after brought in with uh, Yash. It should be Yah Joshua, the son of Nun. That's what the holy name has to possess of the Gentiles 
possession of Gentiles whom Yahweh drave out before the face of our fathers until the days of David. So you can see that it's talking about. Now, the other place that that's written in, in the King James Version, is um, is uh, Hebrews 4 and uh, 8. We'll read 4 and 7, maybe, and then. Okay. Hebrews 4 and 7. Again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, today, after so long a time as it was said, well, you might as well start about five there. Okay. Verse five. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it seemeth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. See, so they didn't go into the Canaan's land because of, of, of unbelief, and that's why they died in the wilderness. Read on. And again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Yahshua, son of Nun, had given them rest, then... No, not... it's King James Version. That's the point. King James Version said, for if Jesus had given them rest, okay, then I'm would sorry. he not back afterward it. have spoken of another day. Now, right there, it's telling you that they knew that back there, when he was back there as Joshua, the son of Nun, giving them their inheritance back there, if he would have given them rest, they wouldn't have had to wait for the Savior to come in and die, bury, resurrect. So it, it's, it should be if Joshua, the son of Nun, had given them rest, he wouldn't have spoken of another day. Mm -hmm. So you see two places in the Bible where they're, ta they're talking about Joshua, but mm -hmm. they they took Joshua out of the Bible and put Jesus in every place. And there's a couple places where they shouldn't have done that, but it's right. to show you that they knew that it was the same one and the same name. And so those are important points. Just wanted you to let you know that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And and I'll tell you what, look at what the look at what the holy name guy did. The next verse says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. We're talking about an eternal rest there. Mm -hmm. But look at what holy name guy does because he's a Sabbath keeper. Right. <laughs> there remaineth therefore the keeping of the Sabbath to the people of El. Can you believe that? <laughs> the Holy Spirit saying the eternal rest, there's a rest of, of having eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. And he's got keeping of the Sabbath to the people. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep on keeping the Sabbath. <laughs> no. Uh, matter of fact, you ought to read that. Uh, our first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Well, one of the scriptures is Matthew 24 and 4, where it says, um, take heed that no man deceive you. Then the other one is Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. We want to read that and then come down. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Mm -hmm. This is one of the scriptures to our first aim to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and Matthew, actually exists. Matthew 11 and 27. All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son, but the father which knoweth, <clears throat> excuse me, and but he, forgive me. All things are delivered me unto my father. So he, Yahweh's turned everything over to the son. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Well, that's what Dr. Kinley said. I had a vision revelation. Don't believe me. but uh, I, He said directly from Yahweh Elohim. Mm -hmm. uh, don't believe me, but make me prove it to your satisfaction. And he said, what really happened? I received Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So now it says, whom the Son will reveal him. Then the next verse says what? Come unto, Come unto me, me all, all ye that labor. labor. He's talking and to I those that are under the law there. 
Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. They had 613 laws and ordinances. He said, and I will give you rest. You see who's given the rest? Mm -hmm. yes. So that's why that you can't say if, if Jesus would have given them rest, they would have spoken of another day because he already said when he was in his ministry in a physical body, I will give you rest, right. which is really the Holy Spirit in him. See? Mm -hmm. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, it's the school. Are you come to learn? Right. See, because we need to know. Well, eternal life is to know him. And that's John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. See, the Sabbath was a rest for the physical body. But he's given the rest to your spirit body, which is your soul. Right. Yeah, and you, he's given you eternal rest. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What's his yoke? Believe on me <laughs> and you shall find rest into your soul. Learn of me. So you see that? So uh, uh, just wanted to bring those points out there. I have a question for Dr. Barros. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to share something with Dr. Barris also. Go ahead, Sybil. I'm sorry. Well, I just want to ask you, um, Jean, uh, is that clearer? Was it made clearer for you? Oh, it, it, it was clear for, for me. But what my concern was, and I know it was discussed yesterday, I was on, but my concern was just reading through that, I thought it should be pointed out that it could possibly have been a misprint or he may have misspoken. Understood. Okay. All right. May I say something, please? Because I said I, I, I dare not say that the Holy Spirit misspoke because he did say it twice. But what Yahweh showed me in what he said is, uh, it took me to 1 Corinthians 15 and 46 because he, you know, he said that he might establish the first because we know what was first was spiritual, but we couldn't see spiritual because it takes the natural. The now, this is the Holy Spirit speaking. So him speaking, yes, I can see him saying establish first. And then he goes on to say, and then that promise that promise that I, he said that, I, he said that promise that was made to Abraham, that is his seed. He would multiply his seed. So I, I'm, I'm too afraid personally to say he misspoke, but I, he, Yahweh did show me that, how he can mean establish the first, because he's speaking spiritually so. And that's just my, my take on what he said. What 1 Corinthians 15 and 46 says, how be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards, that which is spiritual. Because from whatever sense he was in when he said what he said, that's what Yahweh showed me. That's just my take and my little two cents I wanted to add. Thank you. That makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're back in the lecture. Uh, where are we at? Now listen, folks. Okay. Uh, we read through. That through you might walk in the spirit to none of the natural things as a service unto you away because he's taken them away okay if you're going to continue to do that you don't believe the scriptures okay so you know where that is yeah you don't believe the prophets of yahweh you think it's going to continue on that's where you're at yes yeah okay. he said he come in to fulfill it to take it out of the way that he might establish the first and then that promise i'll say this and i'll sit down that promise that was made to abraham that in his seed, he would multiply his seed as the sands of, of the sea and as the stars of heaven. Now listen, folks, listen close so you can take this home and study it, see? Now, if he's going 
to multiply his seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven. Now the Jews, they think that they are the seed of Israel. <clears throat> See that now? Now there is not 15 million blood Jews in the world. See, now would you call that a multiplication of the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven? No. Something wrong somewhere. See that now? You can't say Yahweh made that made the mistake. But listen here. The whole family of heaven and earth is all called by the same name. Yahweh makes no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. He never has had any more respect for the Jews than he has had for the Gentiles. Never. He said, I repeat, Yahweh hasn't had any more respect for the Jews than for the Gentiles. All of them are called by the same name. All are the sons of Yahweh. He makes no difference between them. Now listen, folks, all that you can see. Now don't just, don't jump up and say, that the heavens and the earth have already passed away. Don't jump up and say that, because that's not so. Yahweh did declare the end from the beginning. And with him, it's him running his course, you understand. But with you, it's not. Is that right? So don't you go trying to jump off out there into the ethereal space, you understand, and try to take something that you can't see, can't touch, and can't taste, can't you, can't you understand, and try to fool some the uh, people who see nothing of it, understand? That's why Yahweh made everything as it is. That's, listen, see, you have a mortal or a physical body and an eternal spirit, if you are right, dwelling in a mortal body. Now, what's coming up next is he's going to transform this body into an immortal body. You do not have an immortal body now. The scriptures read this, look. He only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach. He is the forerunner, and he ended it all in the same age. Yahweh gave him that acceptable body. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, your body is a veil, for which be the Holy Spirit. You follow what I mean? So you can't make any exceptions. Oh. Don't forget, folks. Don't forget. I want to see this place filled up. See, I want to see it filled up all the time. Run us out of this building if you possibly can. No sense in us going overseas preaching to somebody over there when we have people to preach to here. You follow what I mean? If you believe the truth, then I hope and trust that you've gotten something out of what I had to say tonight. I hope it has benefited you some. The Holy Spirit prompted me to tell you as the end approach in your life that this peace mission that they're all getting ready to begin, then the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world before the end comes. Yahweh, help us all understand that the gospel of the kingdom be preached in all the world. And as Yahshua the Messiah say, peace. Jehovah's Witnesses and Roman Catholics, if they had preached it in all the world, the end would have already come. But they haven't preached. Somebody haven't preached. Is that right? Okay, I hope you got something out of it. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Praise Joshua. He said a lot of stuff, didn't he? Yeah. Right there at the end, even. And everything. The whole lecture is great. Mm -hmm. um, 
you ought to get the charts and go co we'll cover some of the things he talked about there. Uh, he talked about Abraham there. And uh, what you'll see is uh, on this third uh, no, dispensation ages there. Mm -hmm. You see how that, uh, well, well, as was said earlier, this, this age, said, I mean, this uh, chart is the, we call it the dispensation ages chart, but it says the creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. And you'll see how it goes from beginning to ending. And Yahweh, he talked about that, how Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. Well, one of the things he talked about, uh, he taught, you look at the first age, and it was talked about earlier, but we repeat things, is the creative age. And that is, uh, that is the age where he created the angelic creation and the physical creation. And that was before time even began. That's an eternity without time, that age. But now, when he has the uh, uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and he gives them, he gives, well, he gives Adam a commandment of all the, you know, that he, all the trees he made freely, but tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat for the date you do, you'll surely die. Well, when uh, the devil deceived the woman, and uh, they, well, I'll say this. Uh, he told him in the day that you eat thereof, you'll surely die. Why does he prophesy that? Because there was already a transgression that happened in the angelic realm. He told them not to eat, but he knows they're going to eat because it already happened in the angelic or in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And the angels were created without number. They're just like the stars. And I think that's what he told Abraham. That's, well, that's what we're going to get, y'all, we will. So... Uh, uh, you have uh, from the fall of Adam uh, down to Noah, that's 10 generations of mankind. And there were many people around the time that uh, the flood happened with Noah. So that's what that age is called. Is the, So what Yahweh's doing is putting time, as was said earlier. We're just repeating what was said earlier, how he put time in eternity. Okay. And time begins within e in eternity and time ends within eternity, which that's what's coming up. But right. But and and so he's uh, this antediluvian age is from uh, Adam to Noah. Then you have a flood. Uh, anti means before and diluvian means flood. Now, we didn't know these things. Then when the ark resurrected, ascended and come on over to the next age, that's called the post diluvian age, which means after the flood age. OK, and uh, um, and and so he gives Abraham a promise and uh, read Genesis 12 and well, it says one through three. You might as well read it a little bit. Tom. Genesis 12 and one. Now, Yahweh said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now read 15 and 1. Exodus 15 and I'm sorry, excuse me, Genesis 15 and 1. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and, the, and thy exceeding great reward. Now you see that people say they don't believe in the vision, but that's what he, he said. The word of Yahweh came unto him in a vision. That's not the Bible. That's the creator. He said, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now read the fifth verse. because it was one. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. 
So he says, he's going to bless all the families of earth through thy seed. And he says, now look up there, look at the stars. Can you, if you can count them, that's how your seed's going to be. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, and Dr. Kinley, that's what he was talking about. One of the things he was talking about, he says a lot of stuff. <laughs> but get, uh, uh, and he said, uh, but put it all together when he was going to offer his son up. In Genesis 22, 17 through uh, 18 or 19, go, uh, somewhere there. Read that. He was going to offer up his son, and this is what Yahweh told him, to reconfirm what he told him in the 12th and 15th chapters there. Well, I'm, I tell you, we should have probably read when we were in 15, 15, 13. 15. Yeah, get the, my, get the Moses chart for right now there. Are you talking about in Genesis or? Yeah, Genesis. Yes, yeah. 15. Yeah, 15, 13. Now, you, if you look at the top in Canaan's land, you're going to see the Melchizedek priesthood in white letters at the in Canaan's land, most holy place. Melchizedek priesthood, Abrahamic promise, 430 years before the law. Okay. All right. Uh, read. Genesis 15 and 13. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, that's what we read in Acts the seven chapter, the same right. thing. Yes. Uh, and you got to show the whole chart because they're going to keep going. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance see uh, that's right see uh in other words they started out in canaan's land and he's bringing them down you understand mm -hmm. uh down into egypt so he's prophesying that they're gonna have to go from where he is up in canaan's land and they gotta go down but i'm gonna after they've been uh, i'm gonna judge them people and I'm going to bring them out with great substance. They were slaves, but by the time they ended out there, they were full of gold, silver, mm -hmm. brass, <laughs> wood, uh, fine linen, blue, purple, and scarlet. They had all kind of stuff to make that tabernacle. They came out with great substance. Okay. Now, uh, uh, but before, so he's prophesying what's going to happen to them. Then he tells him to offer up his only son by his wife, Sarah, uh, at the time. Uh, and he did. He was going to offer him up. And then Yahweh told him, don't do it. And this is what he told him after that, 22 and 17. Genesis 22 and 17. Mm -hmm. that, in, <clears throat> that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now you see I, that? Mm -hmm. So he said he's going to bless his seed as the stars of the heaven and the sands of the sea. And that's what Dr. Kinley, was, we read that right before we, you know, that's what we was started back reading. Okay, so it's right there in the Bible, and he's going to bless all the families of the earth through thy seed. And you see how he repeated it? It was in the 12th chapter, and the 15th chapter, and then it goes into the 22nd chapter. And it and that's just to Abraham. He did the same thing to Isaac and Jacob, if you keep reading, but we're not, you know, we don't need to do all that. But people like to say, oh, oh you all don't have very many people there like we do in our church. Right. And no, you don't know. Uh, matter of fact, when he poured out the Holy Spirit, read Hebrews. Uh, and, you know, they and, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses are famous for trying to say only one hundred and forty four thousand are going to be in the uh, in the uh, heavenly class. Right. Well, uh, one thing about it is, wouldn't you be a fool to try to count all the sands of the sea? Yes. Right. Matter of fact, it would you wouldn't even have a you could do a lifetime and never read the count all the sands in the sea. 
Right. But Yahweh said he's going to bless his seed as the stars of heaven, sand and sea. And back then he said there's only about 15 million Jews on the earth plane. And excuse me, we left out an important point. I'm sorry to interrupt you. And in, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Right. I was, thank you for adding it because I was going to ask, could we? That's what the others haven't done. They haven't obeyed his voice. That's right. And again, he's talking about a future thing because uh, read Galatians 3 and 16. Or you might as well read 3.14 maybe and then come down. Galatians 3.14 that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahshua the Messiah that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, that's what it's about, is the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. That's what the promise is talking about. Matter of fact, back on the chart there, he does have that Abrahamic promise and has a red arrow going down to where the age we live in. And it says the promise fulfilled when he pours out the Holy Spirit. Keep reading. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Mm -hmm. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is the Messiah. Now you see who the seed really is? Yeah. Joshua the Messiah. They think they're the chosen people and it's all about us. You understand? Well, he what did cho choose them. But when Yahshua Messiah died on a cross, he brought an end to the flesh, the generations of the flesh. And now he's resurrected a quickening, life-giving spirit and poured out his spirit on the Israelites and on the Gentiles. So that's all the families of the earth being blessed through the seed, which is the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why he's got the promise being fulfilled there. Okay. Uh Read Hebrews 12, 22. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 22. Ah. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living element. Now, this is, the, this is after the Holy Spirit's poured out. And he says, you are come unto Mount Zion. Not going to come. Read. Unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem. We've to come to the Elohim. city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, not physical. See, everybody's looking over there for where physical Israel is and physical Jerusalem. But he says, you are come unto Mount Zion. This is 1900 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mount Zion, the city of the living Elohim, to an innumerable company of angels. He said, you are come. And he says, heavenly Jerusalem. People don't know much about the heavenly, do they? No. Uh, the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company angel. You see how his body has, uh, 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 he's, I'm going to make your seed as the stars of the heaven and the sands of the sea. That's innumerable, ain't it? Yes. You've come to an innumerable company of angels. You can't count all the angels that make up the spirit body of of, of Yahshua the Messiah. And then what about all the souls that he resurrected when he resurrected? What about all the souls he's poured out the Holy Spirit and saved and they've taken off the flesh? Isn't that a big body? Can you count all them? No. And then people are going to brag about I, the Roman Catholic Church got one billion people in their, in, in, their, uh, in their church. Well, that's a lot of people. But that, that ain't the spiritual body that's uh, above the star. You can count a hundred uh, billion. You understand? Right. But you can't count an innumerable company of angels and all the souls that have been saved through Yahshua the Messiah. You see how great the creator is? Yes. And now you've come unto that? Read. To the general assembly and congregation of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Yahweh, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. 
That's right. Yahweh is judging everybody and the spirits of just men made perfect. That's mm. what he's changed, giving you the Holy Spirit. That's a just man made perfect if you believe the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. See, read. And to Yahshua, the mediator of the new covenant. At one time when he said, and to Yahshua, he goes, woo-wee. <laughs> oh, yes. You really come to something when you come to Yahshua the Messiah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's the mediator of the new testament now where it said heavenly jerusalem read galatians now go to the moses chart again and, and uh uh well and uh and read uh you see where it says yahweh is spirit manifesting within the clouds symbolizing eternity jerusalem above see mm -hmm. that's heavenly jerusalem mm -hmm. jerusalem above it says mm -hmm. Uh, right below that, Lenore, <laughs> and symbolize the clouds, symbolize eternity, Jerusalem above, right before the attributes. Now, where that is, is Galatians 4.26. Galatians 4.26, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. And what he was talking about was the old uh, well, the, uh, he said that the two sons of Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, were the two covenants, and that uh, Ishmael uh, uh, was was a was a son after the flesh, and that's like Israel under the old covenant, how that they had carnal ordinances which were fleshly, and then he said Isaac uh, is like the new covenant, mm -hmm. and then it says, and and Jerusalem is above is the mother of us all now now see we all had that's how we all come in this world is we had a mother <laughs> that carried us around and gave birth to us right mm -hmm. well that natural birth is representing a spiritual birth right so on the day of pentecost you can go to the elementary chart probably now and look at the bottom part after yahshua messiah's death burial resurrection he ascended and poured out the holy spirit on the israelites first see now that's them being born of the spirit now you understand and that's and, and and that that causes them to be after his death burial resurrection he ascends then he pours out the holy spirit that's the next plate see him get receiving the holy spirit there on the day of pentecost that's jerusalem above then seven years later peter goes down to the cornelius house and acts the 10th chapter preaches the death burial resurrection and the holy spirit According to law and the prophets, in the name of Yahshua, and as he spoke those words, the Holy Spirit fell on them that heard the word. Now, one of the things Dr. Kinley was explaining at the end there is that people were saying, oh, we got immortal glorified bodies right now. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, uh-uh, that's not true. Uh, even though Yahshua did fulfill all the natural, you still have a physical body. And, and, and uh, well, you might as well read. Um, see, that's the good news. Yahshua the Messiah did have a physical body when he walked around for 33 years. He did, they, he, he, he was nailed to the cross and he died. And they buried that body in the tomb, but he resurrected a quickening life-giving spirit. So his body is spiritual. So what that's showing you is, is that there's life after the flesh mm -hmm. in other words you uh when you if you receive the spirit and, and he had the holy spirit when he was on the cross there mm -hmm. and then he gave up the ghost and when he resurrected he has a, a glorified body well that's the good news is that yahweh's given us this physical body mm -hmm. we live so long in this physical body and if you by the preaching of the gospel and see Oh, man. Um, um, remember, read Ephesians 1 and 13. And also, well, Mark 16, 15, it says this. Go into all, this is right before he ascends. Matter of fact, when you see him ascending there, and those disciples are standing there. Well, one of the accounts in Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized shall be saved. You could, you got to believe the de the gospel or the good news of Yahshua the Messiah, how he died, buried, resurrected, ascended, yea, poured out the Holy Spirit according to the scriptures. And that was done by the first speaker today. 
there had it read and was going through it. And that's what the scripture lesson, he was preaching the gospel to them. Showing those death, you know, showing the stuff, testifying to Yahshua the Messiah, because Yahshua said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures for them. You think you have eternal life. They are they that testify of me. So he, he says in John, uh, Mark 16, 15, go in all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Does that, that means Jew and Gentile, doesn't it? It means everybody. Yes. Preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized. It's not with water. Them that believe and are baptized with the Holy Spirit shall be saved. So you can believe the gospel and be baptized with the Holy Spirit shall be saved. Them that believe not shall be damned. You don't want to believe the gospel of Yahshua. You can be damned for that. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out demons. See, you got to preach the gospel in the name of Yahshua to cast out demons. And you shall speak with other tongues or new tongues. Mm -hmm. You're not going to speak the same way you was. <laughs> you, you, you hear this language we're talking? Do you hear preachers preaching like this? No. Or like the lecture we just read? No. <laughs> no. no. Uh, uh, but we're trying to help them. You understand? We're not against people. We're against false doctrine taught to the people. And there's a lot of lying going on out here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Out there. You understand? See, and, and then what did Ephesians, and, and so when he they received the Holy Spirit, that's what they went out preaching, was the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah so that souls could be grafted in by the Holy Spirit if they believed it. You got Ephesians 1.13? Yes. Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now which, see, you, when the gospel, see, you're trusting him because he gives you witnesses of how he died, buried, resurrected, ascended, and poured out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, and that, and, and uh, and whom else you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation after you believed your seal with the Holy Spirit of promise. See out there, they're not teaching that. They're not teaching you're saved by grace through faith and it's a gift of Yahweh. Uh, they're preaching that Jesus is died, buried, resurrect, but they think he went, went up into heaven and he's going to come back one day. They don't see him coming back as the Holy Spirit. See, uh, there's a lot of things there. But read... Uh, Philippians uh, 3, 20 and 21. And he, he talked about this because uh, they were saying, uh, well, we got immortal glorified bodies now. He said, no, if you have the, uh, the Holy Spirit, you have an immortal spirit and the future existence is to receive an immortal glorified body. Right. See, um, uh, and you know, and you know, back there, they had a, a group of people that uh, that were living during Yahshua's time, and they were called Sadducees. Mm -hmm. And in Acts 23 and 8, it says the Sadducees didn't believe in spirit, resurrection, or angels. And I'm wondering, what are you? You must be really carnal. <laughs> and you know there ain't nothing spiritual about that if you don't believe in spirit uh angels or resurrection that you real what are you well you just believe in carnal things physical things that's why they love the carnal ordinances and that's why they were against him they were sad you see sad you see yeah. and that's what we were we were sad you see before we heard the truth and so we're not against people. We were wrong too. Yeah. <laughs> but he's able to transform your mind. See, cast them demons out by the preaching of the gospel. Okay, you got the yes, Philippians got? three and okay. twenty. For our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we are expected. Did you know you're supposed to be a citizen of heaven? <laughs> mm -hmm. And all, but the whole King James will say. Our conversation is in heaven. Right. In other words, it's a heavenly teaching here. Right. That's why we use the Yahweh is a heavenly name for the heavenly father. That's a name he gives himself. Mm -hmm. Elohim is a heavenly title for the word or son. Yahshua is a heavenly name for the Holy Spirit. 
That's the Holy Spirit's name. Our conversation or our citizenship's in heaven. Read. For which, from which also we are expecting our Savior King, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to... Now you to see, he's going to change our vile body. That's the physical body that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. In other words, you're going to, you can receive an immortal glorified body. That's what the... Well, that's the expectation. That's the that's the uh, tenth aim of our school to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. See, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to change his, our vile body, physical, into one fashion as glorious body. And that's what Doctor Kimley was talking about. How that the Holy Spirit in this age, he can change this. He's the one that made your physical body and gave you physical life, so that he's the one that can give. Make your spiritual give you uh, make that spirit body and give you eternal life, a moral glorified body. Read that it may be fashioned unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. That's right. That's what He told the Philippians. Then He told the Corinthians the same thing uh, in different words. In Corinthians fifteen thirty five, it says they'll ask, "Well." In the resurrection, what body do they come? And he talks about different bodies, just like you got different kind of seeds and they got to come up with different kind of plants. You understand? You get different types of stars and all the animals got different types of bodies. See, read 1542, and it's talking about Yahshua's death there. You ought to get the charts, though, and then you can see that. But anyway, First go ahead. 1542, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. See, it was sown it in corruption. Sown. When he died on the cross, they corrupted him. They whipped him and all kinds. They made him look like a spectacle. It was sown in corruption, but he was raised in incorruption. There's a difference there. Read. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. He looked like he was dishonored. Oh, that was supposed to be our king, but he was raised in glory. Spirit body being king. Read. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. When somebody dies, it looks like they're weak. <laughs> you understand? But it was but he's raised in power. He had to go through that to die, take on the sin, die, bury, but he's going to resurrect in, in power. Read. It power is in the resurrection. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. He was sown a natural body, but he's raised a spiritual body. Read. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And so it is written. And we got natural bodies right now. But mm -hmm. our inward man, the spirit and the soul, that's a spirit body. See, uh, but but you, you still are clothed with a physical body. There's still a physical creation out here. It hadn't been changed yet. That's what he was talking about. Read on. And so it is written. The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. See, Yahshua was a life-giving or quickening spirit. Read. He can quicken your heart and mind. Raise oh. you from the dead right in your seat and in your mind by hearing the truth being preached. Read. How be it that which was first, that, mm. excuse me, that which, that which was first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and the afterward, that which is spiritual. Mm -hmm. The first Adam is of the earth, earthy. The second Adam is Yahshua from heaven. That's right. That first Adam was a, he was a, he was a created son, but he's testifying to the only begotten son. Read. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as it is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So you see, he's talking about that they're earthy. That's earthy. And that we got earthy bodies. They're made from the dust of earth. And they go back to the earth after you die. But there's a part of you didn't come from the earth. That's the inside man, mm -hmm. person, inner self. Read on. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Yeah, see, that's the good news, that there's life after life, <laughs> or life after you die physically. You, he's going to have an, he's, he, this is just the fourth age. 
He's got the fifth age coming. Mm -hmm. Just like Wednesday is the fourth day of the week, it had to end so that Thursday can come. Well, that's how he goes. It keeps on going, though. Uh, so uh, just as we born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's the next age. That's why he was telling them, don't be saying you got a mortal glorified body now. That ain't happening. And there's guys out there teaching that, oh, this age already ended. They don't know. Mm -mm. No. He ain't burned everything up yet. Read on. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. And that's what they teach on funerals. They say, you're going to see them in heaven. But the Bible <laughs> says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. <laughs> Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And that's at the end of this age. Read. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. Yeah, see, you're going to be all be changed and you're either going to receive an immortal glorified body and be one of his angels or you're going to be in the lake of fire and there's nothing worth. And so you, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. And you can ask questions. And uh, this is the greatest teaching. This is the teaching you always given mankind at the end of this age. And so um, we ran out of time, but he says a lot of stuff in his lectures. <laughs> So we wanted to show how that the Bible and the things he has on the chart are, they all go together. So if you learn anything, you thank Yahweh on to his son, Yahshua Sire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful lecture. We thank you, Dr. Thank you. Now at this time, we like to cordially, cordially invite everyone to come out and study with us again. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. We also hold a Jamaican class on Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. May we all start, stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say together, Hallelujah! 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 God bless your day. You're too dear. Too dear.